damn book nook noggin and let's talk about what's eating Gilbert Grape now. I'm sure that you probably saw the title of this and you're like, hey, I know that film, Johnny Depp, Leonardo DiCaprio. You're like, yeah, I know that film from the 90s and you probably love it much like I did. So, yeah, I will admit I was one of those people who saw the film before I was aware that it was based on a book. And good to know that the author who wrote the book also wrote the script for the movie. Uh, that's a little, like, little tidbit I bet you a lot of people were not aware of. Gilbert Grape, um, I'm going to say that I had to rewatch the film. I've seen the film many times. Um, I had to rewatch it because it's been a number of years since I've seen it, and I wanted to rewatch the film before I finished the book because the two are completely different. I'm going to say that the film adaptation of the book, I'm going to say it's written so that the material, the ideas behind the film are easily digestible in comparison to the book. Um, the book does have a lot of differences. Um, it's got some minor differences. There are a few characters, for instance, the sister of Janice, who they mentioned the brother Larry who moved away and doesn't live with the great family, but there's also a sister named Janice who is a stewardess and she has a degree in psychology and she's also another family member who got away, who sends back money to help support the family, which they never really mention that in the film. Like, they mention that Larry is a part of the family, but you never see him. Like, they show, they briefly talk about him in the beginning of the film, but then it's just like he doesn't exist the rest of the film. Um, him and Janice, who are the older siblings of the Great Clan, you know, they, they are a part of the story in the book. Um, there are other, like, minor differences, like, um, Becky, um, she doesn't live in an RV, like, in the film. She lives with her grandma, which is kind of the case in the movie, but her mo her grandmother is someone who lives in the town, and there's just, like, little things like that that are different from the film and the book version. Like I said, I feel like the film it gives, it's everything spoon-fed to you, you're not left trying to figure out exactly what it is that's eating Gilbert Grape. Um, there's more of an emphasis on the fact that Gilbert Grape is not happy. And you're reminded of this when you're reading this because there's a number of times where people are like, oh, you look, there. people mention that he looks just like his father. And I know in the film adaptation, you're aware they, they do, there's a scene where they say that, you know, dad's dead, that whole scene there. And the chaos that ensues from that mentioning of that. In the book, it's it's a lot more brutal. We learn that Albert Grape had hung himself in the basement of their home. And this is like the after effects. Like how the family is years later, they're trying to deal with it. Like he was the head of the household. He was the provider for the family. And he's not there, so we see a couple of the kids, they never knew what it was like to have a dad because they were really young. And it's not just that, but it seems like Gilbert and his sister Amy, most of the responsibility, because their mother's just kind of checked out, she's eating herself into a, into a decline, I guess you could say. So the title is quite appropriate, What's Eating Gilbert Grape? Um, one of the things I do want to throw out there, I'm going to throw this out there. Um, this takes place in the 80s, and it was written in 91. The copyright for this is 1991, so it's not politically correct. I'm going to throw that out there. Um, if you are someone who has a family member who has special needs... You're going to, one of the things, one of the trigger warnings I'm going to have to give you as the R word is thrown around very casually, um, there's oftentimes where Gilbert refers to his little brother Arnie as the R word. It, it's quite prevalent. It's mentioned numerous times throughout the story. I mean, he is called Arnie, but like a lot of the times he'll do something and Gilbert will refer to him as the R word. 
So I'm just throwing that out there. This book is not for everyone. If you are someone who's quite sensitive to that, because you have someone who has special needs, you might be offended by that. So I'm throwing that out there, letting you know that that is, and also the suicide thing. So that's also a trigger warning too, because they do talk about it quite a lot. Um, it's not a, like a brief little scene like it is in the film. It's kind of like, they, you know, this is a family who's distraught that their, their father and, you know, husband is no longer a part of their lives. And like all these people have all these responsibilities and they're trying to make a go of it. Um, also, there is the age gaps that I feel like the film never really touches upon. I mean, you know that Gilbert Grape has this relationship with Mrs. Carver. Um, that's kind of brought up a little bit more in depth. Um, we learn how young Gilbert Grape was when that relationship first started, that he was only a teenage boy. He was only 17. And then they, they emphasize the fact that how old Becky is and that she's only 15 while Gilbert Grape is 24. So yeah, there are those circumstances. That's why I'm going to say that this book is not for everyone because those who might view those as sensitive subject matters, you may not want to read this. Yes, the film was very heartfelt, kind of one of those things you care about the characters. You 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 care how this family is dealing with all these pressures and how they're trying to survive and all of that. But I feel like this book is a little more brutal, a little more raw, um, than the film portrays, which I feel like is another reason why this book has such a high rating in Goodreads, because it is so raw, it is so like in depth. You're 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 seeing all this stuff from the perspective of Gilbert Grape, and he's just you know like there's another character that's in the book that's not mentioned at any time at all ever in the film, um, who was one of Gilbert Grape's like school peers. And this guy, Lance, I can't remember what his last name is, but this guy basically, he's a good looking dude who basically went to college and all that and he's on the local news and he's like the local celebrity. And it's often kind of mentioned, I think they use him as the opposite of Gilbert because this is what Gilbert could have become if Gilbert did not have to stay behind and take care of, provide for his family. Um, it's often kind of you know, mention that Gilbert, he's reliable because he's going to be stuck in Andorra forever. And, you know, Gilbert does not, he doesn't want to be, he doesn't want that to be the extent of his life. He does not want to be the person who's responsible for everyone. And maybe thinks that maybe he could eventually leave the town of Andorra. And this is another thing that I kind of noticed when we're, while we're on the subject of the film and the book and how they're trying to they want you to know that Andorra is this little like middle of nowhere town in the Midwest now in the film the the caravan the 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 trailers coming through the town it's that's not what they're waiting for in the book in the book they're waiting for amusement an amusement um park rides are coming in and it's their fall festival that's just a totally different thing because they make an emphasis about how Arnie can't wait to see the merry-go-round horses and makes a big deal about that and that's something that I feel like they should have included that in the film there were a lot of little moments like that that were kind of like they were kind of like oh you know those kind of heartfelt kind of moments that I felt like should have included in the film, and they were. Uh, I really do not know why the author chose to exclude some of that stuff and change that. Like I said, I feel like the film adaptation was supposed to be directly spoon-fed, you know, you didn't have to put too much thought into exactly what was eating Gilbert Grape. But if you read it, you kind of get those little glimpses into all that stuff. Um, I feel like the the friends of Gilbert Grape, because you get more of an idea that he is friends with the Undertaker's son and with Tucker and all that. Um, those characters kind of have more uh, more interactions, more uh, scenes going on for them in the book than they did in the film. Um, there's a relationship going on with one of those characters and Gilbert's sister Ellen. And the whole relationship with Ellen and Gilbert is kind of, you know, 
that's an interesting um, aspect too, because she feels like at times that Gilbert's trying to be like her father, that she's never had a father because she was born and her dad was dead. But I'm not going to ramble, I don't want to spoil it, but the, I thought this was a really good read for me. It's only like 300 and... I think it was 300, yeah, 319 pages. Um, it, it looks like a massive book. It looks really thick, but like I said, it's only 319 pages. I did kind of take my time reading it. The pacing is, it's decent pacing. Um, if you're go don't do not go into this expecting it to be just like the film. It is not like the film. It is so much more than the film. It's like I said, it's more brutal. It's more raw. Um, at times, there are going to be some kind of scenes you're just going to be like, you don't want to read that. But it's necessary to understand exactly what's eating Gilbert Grape. So yeah, I, I feel like I cannot emphasize that enough. And like yet again, I'm going to remind you and say that this book is not for everyone. It's not for everyone. Um, I know a lot of people really enjoyed this. It does have its fan base. Um, I did give this a 4 out of 5 star rating on Goodreads. I really enjoyed it. I, re I see it for what it is. Um, I'm, I'm going to stop rambling now and I'm going to do, like I say always, if you would like to purchase a copy of this for yourselves, I will have a link to Amazon down below. Any and all purchases made through that link greatly help me out. Um, I get a very small percentage of that as I'm not receiving AdSense from Google. Um, you could buy something as small as a pack of gum, and I get a small percentage of that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be this specific book. I mean, the link does go to this book, but you can buy anything, and it helps me. Um, if you cannot do that, like let's just say you live outside the region of North America, and you, but you want to help support my channel, I'm going to throw it on my coffee link if you wouldn't mind buying me a coffee or two. Any little bit helps out. And if you can't do any of those, but you want to see more books, videos, more book recommendations, or book reviews, by all means, hit that subscribe button. Why either hit that notification bell. This has been Dan. This has been What's Eating Gilbert Grape by Peter Hedges. And I feel like this is the first time I've mentioned the author's name, because I've never really, never really heard this author's name before, but I feel like everybody knows What's Eating Gilbert Grape. So yeah, it is different, very different. Well, not extremely different from the film. It does have some similarities, but like I said, this is more raw, more brutal. It's definitely not for everyone. I cannot emphasize that anymore. That's all I got for you guys. Till next time. Later.